Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid. This is Camo Wolf, coming at you at a cold, snowy night right out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. You guys remember last time, we were uh, in this hallway, all these soldiers got brutally massacred, and we saw the ninja go through that door there, so, yeah, basically, where else to go? Might as well dive right into it. Guys, it's like one of my Japanese animes. I've come from another world to do battle with you. What is it, revenge? It is nothing so trivial as revenge. A fight to the death with you. Only in that can my soul find respite. I will kill you, or you will kill me. It makes no difference. Ah, fine. He can watch from inside there. I need that man. Keep your hands off him. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel alive again. Oh shit. Alright guys, so basically... This guy's got some serious beef with Snake. We don't know why. We know nothing about him. Uh, basically, we just know that he really wants to fight us real bad. I'm not quite sure why. But, this is quite possibly my favorite boss battle in any Metal Gear Solid game. Possibly just because I think he's one of the coolest characters of any game. But also, I don't know, I just really like, I like all the dialogue in this battle, and this character, and... I don't know, something about it I just really like. Anyway. Just uh, for purely for example purposes, I'll show you guys what not to do in the battle. First instinct, you're gonna think, "Hey, shoot him, right? Why not?" So I'll wait till he comes up behind me again. You don't like that. Snake, you can't defeat me with a weapon like that. Can't defeat him with a weapon like that. Okay. Oh God. So you can see the attacks are very powerful. Crush him again. He just blocks it. Basically, first time I played this, um, I tried shooting him a lot, and he just kept slicing me and slicing me and slicing me until I finally died. He just keeps saying little comments like, you can't beat me with a weapon like that. So, basically, what you have to do is he's he likes an old-fashioned fight. So... We're gonna take it to him hand to hand. Good. Now we can fight as warriors. Hand to hand. It is the basis of all combat. Only a fool trusts his life to a weapon. Indeed, only a fool trusts his life to a weapon. So now we're having a good old fashioned fist fight. But he is way more powerful than me, so I can't exactly just run at him all the time. I kinda gotta be sneaky and wait till he just attacks and run. Usually right after he does an attack like that, if he wasn't in that little office area, I would have gone after him. Oh god. Because if you just try and straight up attack him, he's gonna kick your ass every time. Like that. Bring it. Bring it. Oh god, I'm trapped. Yeah, and 
His attacks are going to get increasingly more devastating as time goes on. Oh, I totally thought he was going to slap me one there, but he didn't. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kisser. What? How did I not get him there? Come on, run, Snake, run! God, he's just so agile. Maybe even more agile than Snake. I know Snake's been dodging a lot of things. Bullets, tank shells, but... Oh god, I walked right into that one. I want that rash. I want it real bad. Oh, I can walk through these things. Come on. Follow me over here, ninja. Follow me to your doom. Oh god. Triggered the next little uh, scene here yet. Got him down to about half life though. I don't know, it's hard to describe why I like this battle so much. There's just something about it that sticks out in my mind. There's two boss fights in this game that really stick out to me. This is one, and the other one I'm sure I'll mention when I get to it. Come on. Come on, attack me. Oh god. Oh, how did I miss him? Man, have a little dodge fest here. There we go. That's good sneak. Hurry up and catch me. Oh, balls. Really? Okay, he's invisible now. That's gonna make it even more difficult. I'm gonna go over here because I saw him over there, but I don't I don't trust this. Okay, I got him actually. Oh. I tears me. You know, I never really noticed this before. Have any of you played Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots? This is a little bit like the uh, first boss battle in that game. Hurry up and catch me. Huh. Yeah, I just replayed that game and I didn't notice it until now. Oh, how did I not get him there? Let's be real here, game. You know I got him. Oh, Jesus. He just took me straight on there. Ah! Show yourself. He's freaking out now. He's a bit of a sadist. I don't know. He was really into his pain. Oh, oh god. That was a really powerful attack. now too? Man, this guy's going crazy. Wants 
me to hurt him more. Talking about it's like he knows us. Do you remember Snake? The feel of battle, the clashing of bone and sinew. Man, this guy is got some serious post-traumatic death stress syndrome, I think. Bastard. Okay, he's freaking out now. You know what? We gotta break up the FAMAS for this. Well, actually, FAMAS isn't so good for aiming. Bullets there. I felt that snake. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. What? Not again. He was just freaking out. Gray Fox! Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Ridiculous. You of all people should know he died in Zanzibar. No. He should have died, but he didn't. What? It happened before I joined Foxhound's medical staff. They were using a soldier for their gene therapy experiments. I never heard that. It happened right after you retired. My predecessor, Dr. Clark, was in charge. Dr. Clark? Yes. He started the gene therapy project. And where is he now? He was killed in an explosion in his lab two years ago. So what about this soldier? Apparently, for their test subject, they decided to use the body of a soldier who was recovered after the fall of Zanzibar. And that was Gray Fox. But he was already dead. Yes. But they revived him. They fitted him with a prototype exoskeleton and kept him drugged for four years while they experimented on him like a plaything. Today's genome soldiers were born from those experiments. That's the sickest thing I ever heard. They used him to test all sorts of gene therapy techniques. Naomi, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? Because it's confidential information. Is that the only reason? Naomi, what happened to Gray Fox after that? The record says he died in the explosion. I see. But even if that ninja is Gray Fox, the question is, why? From what I could tell, he didn't know who he was. Are you saying that he's just a mindless robot? I'm not sure, but he seems intent on fighting me to the death. We'll meet again. I know it. So you'll fight again? Until you kill him? Huh. I'd rather not. But maybe that's what he wants. How long are you going to stay in there? Uh, 
Are you one of them? No, I'm not. I always work alone. Alone? Are you an otaku too? Uh, come on, get out. We can't stay here forever. Your uniform is different than theirs. You're the Metal Gear Chief Engineer, Hal Emmerich, right? You know me? I heard about you from Merrill. Oh, so you're here to rescue me. Sorry, but no. There's something that I've got to do first. Oh, well, at least you're not one of them. Huh, are you hurt? Oh, I'm okay. I just twisted my ankle a little bit trying to get away. Well, if that's all, it's nothing to worry about. I want to ask you something. I need information about Metal Gear. Huh? Metal Gear? Yeah. What's Metal Gear really designed for? It's a mobile TMD. It's designed to shoot down nuclear missiles. Only for defensive purposes, of course. Fire! I already know that Metal Gear is nothing but a nuclear-equipped walking deathmobile. Nuclear? W what are you talking about? The terrorists are planning to use Metal Gear to launch a nuclear missile. You telling me you didn't know? They're gonna put a dismantled warhead into Metal Gear's TMD missile module? Wrong. From the beginning, the purpose of this exercise was to test Metal Gear's nuclear launch capability using a dummy nuclear warhead. The terrorists are just continuing the work you started. No, you're wrong. I heard it directly from your boss, Baker. No. A nuclear missile on Rex? So you really didn't know? No. All the armament was built by a separate department, and the President personally supervised the final assembly of the main unit. President Baker? Yeah. I was never told exactly what they armed Rex with. I, I only know it's equipped with a Vulcan cannon, a laser, and a railgun. A railgun, you said? Yeah. It uses magnets to fire bullets at extremely high velocities. The technology was originally developed for the SDI system and, and later scrapped. We were successful in miniaturizing it in a joint venture between Arms Tech and Rivermore National Labs. The railgun is on Rex's right arm. Metal Gear's main function is to launch nuclear missiles. You sure you're not forgetting something? It's true that Metal Gear has a missile module on his back that can carry up to eight missiles, but are you saying it was originally meant to carry nuclear missiles? Yeah, but that's not all I think. If Metal Gear fired only standard nuclear missiles, then they should already have all the practical data they need. No. Could it be? Metal Gear's co-developer, Rivermore National Labs, was working on a new type of nuclear weapon. They were using Nova and NIF laser nuclear fusion testing equipment and supercomputers. So they developed a new type of nuclear weapon in a VR testing lab, huh? Yes, but you can't use virtual data on a battlefield. They would need actual launch data. These are some of the supercomputers. If you link these, you can test everything in a virtual environment. But it's all just theoretical. So this exercise was designed to test the real thing. What did our president do? If the terrorists launched that thing... <sighs> Damn! S -s Damn! I'm such a fool! It's all my fault! The truth is... My grandfather was part of the Manhattan Project. He suffered with the guilt for the rest of his life. And my father, he was born on August 6th, 1945. The day of the Hiroshima bomb. God's got a sense of humor, all right. Three generations of Emmerich men. We must have the curse of nuclear weapons written into our DNA.
I used to think that I could use science to help mankind. But the one that wound up getting used was me. Using science to help mankind? It's just in the movies. <laughs> That's enough crying. Pull yourself together. Where is Metal Gear? Where on this base are they keeping it? Rex is in the underground maintenance base. Where's that? North of the communications tower, but it's a long way there. The emergency override system for the detonation code is there too? Yeah, in the maintenance base control room. You'd better hurry. If they were planning a launch from the start, then their ballistic program is probably finished. And since they haven't called for me in a few hours, they must not need me. In other words, they must be ready to launch. Meryl's got the detonation code override keys. We'll link up with her. If we can't override the launch, we'll have to destroy Rex. I'll show you the way. On that leg of yours, you'll just slow me down. You'll need me if you're gonna destroy Rex. I don't need you. I just need your brain. I created Rex. It's my right, my duty to destroy him. If you get a chance, try to escape. When the coast is clear, I'll contact you by codec. How am I supposed to escape from an island? Uh, okay. So what then? I want you to hide somewhere and keep me informed. You know this place well, don't you? Of course I do. And don't worry, I've got this. the same stealth technology as the ninja. Foxhound was gonna use them, but with this I'll be fine. Bad leg and all. Good, but I want Meryl to watch after you too. Meryl, the engineer's okay. That's a relief. I want you to look after him. Where are you now? Very close. There she is, over there. <gasps> oh no, damn, they've spotted me. <laughs> Meryl, what happened? Something's wrong. Did you hear something? Wasn't that some kind of music? What did she look like? She... she was wearing the same green uniform as the terrorists. A disguise? She had such a cute way of walking. She kind of wiggles her behind. You were really looking. Well, she's got a very cute behind. Way of walking, huh? If she's disguised as the enemy, you'll have to contact her when she's alone, huh? There's only one place where we can be sure she's by herself. Where's that? Don't be so dense. Here, use this security card. It's security level four. You're not in pain, are you? Huh? You feel okay? Nothing bothering you? What's wrong? Getting all friendly all of a sudden. <laughs> no, nothing. I'm glad you're okay. You're strange. I'm a little nervous. Everyone else I've saved suddenly dies. You're bad luck. Forget it, Doctor. Call me Otacon. Otacon? It stands for Otaku Convention. And Otaku's a guy like me who likes Japan animation. Japan was the first country to successfully make bipedal robots. They're still the best in the field of robotics. And Japanese cartoons played some part in that? They did. I didn't get into science to make nuclear weapons, you know. That's what all scientists say. I became a scientist because I wanted to make robots like the ones in the Japanese animes. Really, it's true. It just sounds like a childish excuse to me. You're right. We have to take responsibility. Science has always thrived on war. Greatest weapons of mass destruction were created by scientists who wanted to be famous. But that's all over now. I won't take part in murder anymore. Whatever. All I want from you is information. Sure. I know everything about this whole base. Ask me anything about Rex or about this place. Also, with this stealth camouflage, I can sneak in and out of the armory and mess hall. If you need ammo or rations, just tell me and I'll bring them to you. 
I'm on frequency 141.12. See you later. Guys, we just got smacked with a whole lot of storyline right there. Um, basically, Cyborg Ninja is one of uh, Solid Snake's old uh, war acquaintances named Gray Fox. If you played the original Metal Gear games, then you'll kind of understand his character a little bit better. Um, if not, then just kind of take it as it goes with this game. That's all you really need to know. Um, and basically what we need to do now is go and help out Meryl because it looks like she's in a bit of trouble. We gotta watch out for her uh, cute wiggling little butt. So um, yeah, but you know what guys? I'm pushing on 27 minutes right now, so I'm gonna have to end this episode right here. But uh, yeah, alright, well thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It probably might just end up being my favorite episode, just because I love that boss fight so much. Gray Fox is one badass motherfucker, and I just love that fight. It's so awesome, I guess. Um, anyway, we gotta give my link a call here. Snake does an old Chinese saying. A scholar who cherishes the love of comfort is not fit to be deemed a scholar. Einstein said it another way. He said that only a life lived for others is worth living. That's why I entered MIT instead of Princeton or Vassar like my friends. I wanted to do applied physics, not just a theoretical stuff. I wanted to make things for people. The Soliton radar system or the Kodak system. I just wanted to make something that would be useful for people. I think that it was the same for Dr. Emmerich, too. But he was used like a tool. Used to make a horrible killing machine. Maybe it would be better if engineers like us just stopped making things. I don't know. Okay, let's, um... You know what, let's go on a new block. There's a very low chance I'll need to use any of those files, but... Hey. I can just create as many internal memory cards as I want, right? So... There we go. Lab. And Snake says nothing to help Mei Ling with her little uh, mental conundrum there as to whether it's better to make make anything at all. Okay, guys. Now I'm really going to end this episode. So, have a good night, and I'll see you guys all next time. Have a good one. <laughs>